We've seen this very cool idea of factoring a second order differential operator into two first order terms and solving a second order linear ODE that way. But what if that doesn't work? What if we can't factor a second order operator nicely? How are we going to deal with that kind of situation? What do I even mean by that? Let's do an example. Let's look back at the simple harmonic oscillator that we introduced recently. Do you remember this guy? This is where you take the second derivative of x and you get minus some constant times x. Let's rewrite that as saying plus lambda squared x equals zero, moving that minus lambda squared x term over to the left hand side. Now, if we take this and isolate the differential operator that's acting on x, what are we going to get? We're going to get d squared, the second derivative term, plus lambda squared i, where again, i is that identity operator. It's d to the zero power. You apply that to x, you get zero. Great. Now, what do we do? We want to factor this, but as a polynomial in D, this doesn't factor nicely. This is not like the example that we looked at previously, where we could factor out that differential operator as D minus I times D minus two I. That doesn't seem to work here. Or does it? We can factor this. We can split this into a pair of first order operators if we use complex coefficients. The imaginary number, lowercase i, is going to be useful to us. Watch this. We can split this as d plus i lambda times i times d minus i lambda times i. Apply that to x get 0. Wait, what is this? How does this work? Multiply it out. Do a whole first outside inside last thing. What do we get? We get d squared and then plus i lambda times d, and then minus i lambda d, those cancel out, and then that last term is minus i squared lambda squared. i squared is negative 1, the two minus signs give you a plus sign, that's plus lambda squared times the identity, that's it, that is our operator, it splits into these two first order pairs using complex coefficients. So what does this mean? What this means is that either d plus i lambda times i applied to x is 0, or d minus i lambda times capital I applied to x equals 0. This is a pair of first order differential equations written in operator form. What is that first order linear differential equation? It is of the form dx dt equals plus or minus i lambda times x. This is just the same simple linear first order equation that we all know and love. dx dt equals a constant times x. But now the constants are imaginary. It's plus or minus i times lambda. Can we solve that? Oh, sure. Sure, we can solve that. What is that going to give us? That's going to give us two potential solutions, the first being some constant times e to the i lambda t, right? It's just whatever that constant is. That constant is i times lambda. Or, or we have the other one where x equals some constant capital C times e to the minus i lambda t. Those are two solutions to this second order differential equation. Now, what is this? What are we going to do with this? I think by now you may have guessed where this is going. We're going to look for some sort of relationship between exponential functions with imaginary powers and trigonometric functions, cosines, sines. Remember Euler's formula. But this time, let's update it a little bit to reflect the terminology, the notation that we're using. e to the i lambda t is what? It's going to be cosine of lambda t plus i times sine of lambda t. And I'm going to let you check what happens when you put a minus sign up in there. You have to use some properties of sine of cosine. The end result is that the real 
and imaginary parts of this complex expression are going to be very good basis functions for solving our differential equation. If we go back to what we have seen, instead of using those complex exponentials explicitly, if we apply Euler, split off the real and imaginary parts and assemble those into a solution, we get our final answer for this second order differential equation. X of t is some constant c1 times cosine of lambda t plus another constant c2 times sine of lambda t. You can check that each of these basis functions satisfies this differential equation, that any linear combination of them satisfies this differential equation. That's it. That is our solution. Now, does this make sense? Yes, yes, it makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Remember, when we introduced this differential equation, we called it a simple harmonic oscillator. We said it had something to do with the motion of a pendulum going back and forth. And that's the reason why we guessed at an answer that involves sines or cosines. And now we see how that falls out from first principles using this technique of factoring a differential operator. You factor it into first order terms, you take what you know from first order linear differential equations, and boom, that's it, we're done.